So we have reached the final step in our process of making a finished and display ready casting of our sculpture. And this step is going to be hand painting the sculpture with a colored wax. It's going to be the same wax that we used to stain the wood, though the application here is a little bit different. Because the resin is not absorbent like the wood is, we can in fact have streaking and or build up thickness of resin, and therefore we can end up with color variation. However, for the most part, we are after an even layer of wax that will uniformly color our sculpture. The application technique is a mix between short brush strokes and tapping with our round bristle brush. One of the main reasons and benefits of using the wax is that it's not so uniform in application as paint has a tendency to be. Because it's pigment suspended in wax, it also has the chance of being reconstituted. So we can rework areas and if we want to get rid of the wax, we can do so more easily than we could with, for example, acrylic paint. Personally, I would prefer to use oil paint during this step, but if you for some reason don't want to use oil paint, you can use colored wax. Oil paint takes a long time to dry, which is why I've chosen wax this time around. I was on a tight schedule here with the sculpture needing to be finished quickly for an exhibition. Otherwise, I would probably have chosen oils, as I found I have a little bit more flexibility with oils and also I end up with a little bit more of a durable surface. Ideally, of course, nobody touches your work too much, so it shouldn't be an issue. Once the wax sets up a bit, it's pretty firm and fairly resistant. But oil paint, once allowed to dry, becomes a dry paint film, which cannot easily be disturbed unless you go at it with solvents or scratch it with a nail or something like that. So ideally, I would have used oil paint, however, because of uh, time crunch this time around, I had to settle for, uh, for wax. Choice of color and value is important when trying to use this two-layer technique. No matter what material you attempt to do it with, wax, acrylics, oils. If the contrast between the two layers is too great, we can get a bit of garish look, which isn't ideal. For my work, I'd like the sculpted forms to speak for themselves, so I want a surface finish that allows that to be the case. This means I try to avoid overly contrasty finishes, where the depths and valleys of the work becomes really dark, while the peaks of the form become really, really bright. This certainly adds contrast, which wasn't intended while the sculpture was being made in clay. There are many opinions on the right way to go about this, but I like to make the decisions I make in clay be considered the correct decisions, and then I try to match my finish on a casting, for example, to those decisions that was made in clay. Some sculptors will make the decisions in the clay to suit the material or intended finish of their work once molded and casted, but I tend to work the other way around. A major point here is the need for a surface that isn't overly contrasted compared to the clay. Another major point is a surface that somewhat matches the reflectiveness of the clay. For the most part, this means a surface that is not super shiny. A shiny surface will tend to highlight different things about a piece of work compared to a matte or a satin finish. Because the sculpture was made with all the decisions about the forms, the volumes and the transitions, in a material that borders more towards matte or satin rather than shiny, I want my finished surface on the casting to be of a similar character. And I think the wax accomplishes this quite well. 